What's up? It's Andy Grammer with Jag. Hi, this is Carly Rae Jepsen, and you're listening to Jag. Hey, everybody, it's Joe Jonas hanging with Jag. This is Heather Knox, Playboy's Miss January 2012. With the hottest Jag I've ever seen. It's B.O.B. Checking in with my homie Jag. So much swag with my homie Jag. It's the Jag Show Podcast. Welcome to Season 2 of the Jag Show Podcast. Uh, As you may have heard in Season 1, I spoke to a lot of interesting people who had great stories to tell. But as my Jag in Detroit podcasting business has taken off, I thought it made more sense to do a podcast about podcasts. So here we are. I wanted to start the season with a very simple podcasting 101 because the term podcast has so much buzz right now, but there are so many people who don't really know what a podcast is. So in its most simple, basic definition, a podcast is a portable radio show. It's something that you can listen to on your tablet or your phone or your computer, wherever you go, whenever you want. You can even listen to it on a home speaker like an Amazon Alexa or a Google Home. And if you think about how media consumption habits have changed over the years, who watches live TV anymore? Aside from sports and the Oscars and other big live events, you watch your shows When you have time, when you get around to it, you pull it off the DVR. It's kind of the same way with podcasts. We live in an on-demand world and audio is catching up to video. But here's the difference. Audio has an intimacy that video does not. We get so bombarded with visual messages in our day-to-day life. They pop up on our screens, whether it's our phones, our TVs, our tablets, our laptops. Sometimes you just want to tune it all out. But when it comes to audio, audio can go in places that video cannot. You can listen to audio while driving. Certainly hope you're not watching a video while you're driving. You can have audio playing on a speaker in the background while you make your eggs in the morning or clean up your house. You can have audio playing at your desk while you're working. Chances are, if you're watching a video, you're not really working. But audio is something you can have on in the background. And audio has an intimacy and a connection to it. If you think about when you grew up with your favorite morning show here locally in Detroit, somebody like Mojo in the Morning or Dave and Chuck or Drew and Mike or in my hometown of Boston, a Maddie in the Morning or in the last decade or so, Toucher and Rich on the Sports Hub. You really feel like you have a connection with these people because you're spending some intimate time with them. They are alone with you in the car on your commute or as you're taking the kids to school or as you're getting ready in the morning. And that same connection can be had with your brand. And you can create that same connection with fans of your brand or your business or your nonprofit. Nobody can tell your brand story better than you. And a podcast is a great way to connect with them. 47 million people listen to podcasts. That number is only growing. They just had upfronts in Los Angeles. If you know television, you know that upfronts are where networks present their next slate of shows to advertisers to see where they want to spend their money. Now podcasts are doing that. In fact, how do I make money on a podcast is probably the second most frequent question that I get asked by clients. The short answer is you're not going to make money to start. You've really got to grow a large audience before you can take on one of these national advertisers. But if you have your own area or expertise or niche, you can find someone to sponsor your show in that area. If you are passionate about basket weaving, you can find a basket company. If you're passionate about Dungeons & Dragons, there's probably a sponsorship opportunity there. And that's the most important thing about starting a podcast. You can't do a podcast just for the sake of doing a podcast. If you don't have passion for what you're talking about, that's going to come through. People aren't going to listen. It's got to be something that you really feel strongly about in order to sell it to your listeners. And the best part is when you're in that situation, you don't have to do any selling. Your passion is going to come through automatically. So you may be wondering what's the first most common question I get for a podcast, and that is, how long should a podcast be? Answer, it depends. As long as you need to tell your story in a manner that is compelling from start to finish. The longer the show, the more compelling it needs to be. For example, here are three podcasts that I listen to pretty religiously. 
Every morning, I listen to The Daily from The New York Times. It's about 30 minutes. It's a real in-depth look at one of the big stories of the day. Their host, Michael Barbaro, interviews one of the New York Times columnists about a particular topic. Again, that's about 30 minutes, and I'll listen to that as I'm walking my dog in the morning. I follow that up with the NBC Sports Boston Breakfast Pod. I am a Boston native and a Boston sports fan. And every morning, they put together a 15-minute recap of some of their best sports talk from the night before. Helps me stay up to date on my teams when I'm 700 miles away. That's about 15 minutes. Now, on the longer side, I'm a fan of the political podcast Pod Save America. That one runs anywhere from about an hour to even an hour 40 minutes, and that comes out twice a week. Now, that one is tricky because it's hard to find the time to listen to that. I can't listen while I'm working because my work involves listening to other podcasts. That said, I can pop that in in the car. So if I'm running errands or I'm going to meet a client or I'm going to pick up lunch, what I'll do is I'll throw on Pod Save America, connects right to my Jeep and my Apple CarPlay, and I'll listen while I'm driving around. And the beauty of it is when I turn the car off, the podcast pauses. When I turn the car back on, plug my phone in, picks right back up where I left off. It's content being consumed on demand on my schedule, and that's the beauty of podcasting. So you may be wondering, how do I get started? If you want to spend $1,000 on a super high-end microphone and you have the means to do it, by all means, go right ahead. If you want to spend ten dollars or $15,000 to have your basement converted into a studio, if you have the means, or better yet, somebody else is paying for it, go nuts. But if you're most people and you're podcasting on a budget, you can get a good USB quality microphone that'll plug into your laptop for anywhere from $50 to $100. And as long as you're in a room that doesn't have a lot of background noise or echo, then your podcast will sound okay. This is a great way to start if you're podcasting as a hobby. Now, if you're doing it for work, if you're doing it to uh, raise money, if you have a lot of financial backing, you can probably invest a little bit higher up the food chain. But really, all you need is a microphone to get started. Once you have the microphone, you need editing software. If you were working on a Macintosh or an Apple, uh, GarageBand works well. Another free editing program is called Audacity. I'm not a fan of it only because I've used professional programs and Audacity is just uh, not my cup of tea. Like a website, you'll need to have your podcast hosted. There are a number of services that offer podcast hosting. Libsyn, which is short for Liberated Syndication, L-I-B-S-Y-N, is probably the most popular one. I've actually moved over from Libsyn to a company called Simplecast. Their website is simplecast.com. I'm actually a referral partner for them, and I can get you a referral code if you want to start with them. They offer you uh, all the statistics you would want for a flat rate per month per show. Once you've found your host, You'll need to do your initial setup, which is submitting your podcast to all the podcast apps. The big ones, of course, are Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. There are others that are big, including iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and more. And in order to submit to any of them, you actually need to have two pieces. You need to have one piece of audio. It can be a simple 10 or 30 second trailer that says, hey, the basket weaving podcast is coming soon. You can expect it in March and we're going to talk about the latest trends in basket weaving. I don't know why I keep coming back to that example, but I do. You'll also need a logo that is not any kind of copyrighted material and it meets Apple's requirements, which means the dimensions have to be square. 1400 by 1400 up to 3000 by 3000 pixels, RGB color format. Google Apple podcast requirements if you want more information on that. So what you do is you have one piece of audio and a logo, and you submit it to all the services and connect them to your host. It takes about three to ten days for all the services to approve your podcasts, and once they are linked to your host, life is good. Every time you record an episode, you edit it, you upload it to your host, and your host will send it to all the apps so people can listen on their app of choice. What are the biggest podcast apps? Far and away, Apple Podcasts, A number one. Podcasts are still dominated by iOS and Apple devices. Uh, last summer at the Podcast Movement Convention in Philadelphia, a representative from Google told us that Google was going to make podcasts a priority for Android devices, considering there are 2 billion Android devices in the world. Sadly, that has not come to fruition. Google seems to be tinkering, but not really all out into podcasting, and that's disappointing. Meanwhile, Spotify has really jumped over Google to become the number two podcast app. They have recently purchased podcast hosting companies, podcast creation companies. 
they are spending a lot of money to get involved in the podcasting space. So Spotify is actually a dominant platform for Android devices and definitely somewhere you want to be if you are podcasting. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, those are really the big three. When you do edit your podcast, there are different schools of thought on this. There are some people who think you should leave the ums and ahs and stutters of normal conversation, that it sounds more natural and free-flowing that way. And that works for more casual podcasts. If you're doing a podcast for business or for branding, though, I'm of the mindset that the majority of ums and uhs and stumbles should be taken out because the more smooth and authoritative you sound, the better it's going to be for your brand. You want to sound like an expert in your field and that you know what you're talking about. That's not to take out every single breath and every single um and uh, but the more you take out, generally speaking, the better you're going to sound. Which, of course, leads me into my one plug for this episode, which is if you are interested in my services, I can help you create the podcast from scratch in terms of equipment, recording, getting it up on all the services, getting accounts set up, all that sort of stuff. Or if you like to record on your own, I'm happy to do the editing for you. I've invested in several pieces of high-end software that can do things like removing breaths, removing the background hiss or hum or echo in a room. If you want to just send me your file, I can make the edits and send it back to you. I have a lot of different services that I offer. If you're interested in learning more about what I do with Jag in Detroit podcast, you can go to my website, jagindetroit.com. I'll link it here in the show notes as well. If you have a question about podcasts or something you'd like me to tackle in a future episode of the Jag Show podcast, shoot me an email, jag, that's J-A-G, at jagindetroit.com, jag at jagindetroit.com. Or you can hit me up on any of the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, it's all the same, Jag in Detroit. Look forward to covering the world of podcasting with you in future episodes of this season. Later.